Hello there! In this video, we'll talk about boards, how to create them, and how to make the most of them in Notion. Boards are a specific way of displaying a database where items or cards organized into columns. Often, people will use them to visualize stages of a process, break down cards by assignee, and more. In Notion, boards are designed to be your ideal companion for project management. To add a board to your workspace, you can click on the New Page button towards the top of the sidebar, Determine the team spacer page to store it in in the dropdown, and select Board from the Add New section. You will then have the option to either select an already existing database from your workspace, or create a brand new one from scratch by clicking on New Database. Another way of adding a board is by placing your cursor inside the page you'd like to store it in, then typing the forward slash key, followed by the word Board, then Enter. Again, we'll click on New Database and the same empty board will show up inside the page. This is what we call an inline database. Should you want your board to exist as a subpage, you'll need to click on its six dot icon and select turn into page. Lovely. Instead of building a board from scratch, let's add one from Notion's template picker to speed things up. To access the template picker, click on templates towards the bottom of the sidebar. To find a template, simply scroll down this list or look up its name in the search bar. In our case, we're going to add Notion's sales CRM template. Let's click on Get Template, then pick the team space where we want it to live. In this case, we'll choose Sales and Success. Great! This is what a fully formed board could look like. Every entry in a board shows up as a card, and these cards are separated into columns. You may already know that Notion database entries are in fact pages in themselves ones that you can use to store even more relevant information. Unlike regular Notion pages, database pages boast a property section at the top. This template comes with a created time property that automatically records the time this page was added to the database. This person property allows folks to specify who in the team owns this account. The status property is to show the status of the sale. This dropdown shows all the options to choose from. Priority helps people understand how pressing the deal is, and one can simply type in the company's name in this text property. This number property lets people punch in the estimated value of the deal. You may add the contact's email and phone number here. Finally, these two date properties enable one to document the last time they were in touch with the person, as well as the contract's expected close date. Now we can click on the breadcrumb here to go back to the database. For demonstration purposes, let's add more entries to this database and edit the existing ones. To add a new card, click on the blue New button at the top right of the database. Or if you already know the deal status, simply find the correct column and hit New. Lovely! To access the View Options menu, navigate to the three dots at the top right corner of your view. In the Layout section, you'll find your database layout highlighted in blue. Just like for galleries, boards allow you to preview your entries' content onto their cards. You can either opt for showing your page's cover image, or some of the page's content. In the latter case, Notion will grab the first image inside the page and display it on the card. If there's no image on a page, the card cover will show a snippet of text. If you're not interested in having visual cues on your cards, just click None. Next, we have card size. Your cards can either be small, medium, or large. The default image ratio is 169, but if you want your images to appear in their original ratio, just toggle on Fit Image. This will create blank space around the image. When Fit Image is untoggled, you have the option to reposition the image on your card cover. Just hover your mouse over it, click here, then manually drag and drop the image around. Once you're happy with the way it looks, hit Save Position. Now we can change our preferences back to the way they were. Note that boards always group cards in columns, and such columns are based on the various options of one of your database properties. In this case, the database property your columns are based on is the status property. In other words, for every possible status, there will be a column assigned to it. But what if you wanted to group your cards according to another property? This is the place to go to change this. Click on Group By, then click on it again, 
and pick another one of your properties from the dropdown. Here, for instance, entries are now grouped according to their account owner. Now you have the option to hide empty groups from this view. In this case, this would mean entries with an empty status property. To do what we just said, toggle this on. When turned on, this other toggle ensures that columns enjoy a colored background, the same color as the property that defines them. What's more, go to this section to decide the groups you'd like to show and the ones you'd like to hide. An open eye next to a group means it is visible on the board. To hide a group, click on its open eye. This will change the icon to a closed eye and move the group to the hidden group section below. To show a group, click on the closed eye next to it, and this will trigger the reverse action. Also, you can manually drag and drop your groups this way to change their order of appearance on your board. You also have the option to create subgroups inside your columns. Here, you can pick the property by which to create these smaller factions. While board groups divide cards vertically into columns, board subgroups will divide your cards within your columns horizontally. Now, let's pick the priority property here. As a result, every priority level is now a subgroup, with the cards related to them appearing below. These very cards also remain in their respective column, determined by their status. If circumstances about leads change, you can always manually drag and drop your cards to change their status or priority level. Finally, note that the same features we mentioned earlier apply to subgroups. Great! From the main menu, you have the choice to set your load limit to 10, 25, 50, or 100 cards at a time. This is especially useful for boards with many entries whose data may be slower to load all at once. And last but not least, click here to lock your database and hence prevent team members from making accidental changes. You can also copy the link to this particular view, duplicate the view, or delete the view. Lesson completed. As you can see, a Notion board can be many things at once. An efficient project management tool, a collaborative place to get work done from within its pages, and a dynamic system that displays information in the ways that suit you best. Go ahead and build your own. Once you do, getting things done will never have been that easy.